The Animaniacs are coming to a console near you this Christmas. You know the story, the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister are cartoon characters who've gone completely potty and they're running amok on the studio lot. As ever, the Looney Threesome are pursued by the jobs with security guard who wants them off the set. It's a puzzle-based platform adventure with some very nice touches. Every level has a movie theme. Here they are doing their Indiana Jones impression. Ever wondered what happened to the lawnmower man? Well, he can't keep a good baddie down, and now he's back in a new game called Cyber War. The virtual villain is now holed up inside the main defence computer, which he's turned into a sort of cyber city. It's due out on CD-ROM next month, with versions to follow on the CD32 and the new Sony PlayStation. Dynamite Heady is a brand new game character with a bit of an identity crisis. He's a broken doll with a selection of weird and wonderful heads, all of which have different powers. So when he's in trouble, he loses his head and swaps it for another one. Look out for him on the Mega Drive next month. Musical styles number two, the blues. I woke up this morning feeling blue. Couldn't think of a cheat to do. I had a cup of coffee about half past two. Still couldn't think of a cheat to do. I was getting really down at a quarter to four when I thought of Zool and the Amigo. On level 4.1, there's two saws and an axe. Go left along the ledge and jump left on the blocks. Keep pressing left. Keep doing the same, and you'll find a secret shoot 'em up game. <laughs> now I'm feeling much better, cause my cheats are nearly done. Even though my dog's died, and I don't get no fun. He's suffering for his music, and so are we. Before this series of Bad Influence started, they gave me this plan, and they said, Andy, look at our fantastic new studio set. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't make Edna Taylor that. In fact, it's still difficult to tell which bit's which when you're actually sitting in the real thing. Our designer spent a whole day making this brilliant model, but again, unless you're an expert, it's difficult to visualise what the final set's actually going to look like. I mean, this block on the end here is supposed to be that set of stairs over there. Not surprisingly, there are computer packages around that can help you out, like this one over here. It's a virtual reality package designed for architects to show people what their designs will look like. Now, it might be a housing estate or an art gallery, or in this case, it's the Bad Influence Studio. You can program in your fixed viewing or camera positions, and this mouse is really good because you can program them in and then recall them using these buttons here. So, two, for example, is the position I started in, and on this button here, I've programmed in a shot which matches our camera right up there. You can pan round to the left and right just like the real thing. Now we go around to the left of the gantry, and back to the video wall, if you'd be so kind. There's the gantry and back to the video wall. You can also program in lots of really tricky camera moves. In fact, this one's so tricky you probably couldn't really do it in our studio. You can choose how much detail to have in your virtual world at a price. The more there is, the slower it runs. The computer also does a clever thing so that it can run as fast as possible. It only draws full detail when you approach an object. So watch the PC screen and the table carefully. Suddenly I feel strangely detached from reality. The Bad Influence set, the real one that is, wasn't built in a day and neither was the virtual one. You have to start with basic shapes. Now, I've taken a basic cube shape here and made it into a studio tabletop. Then I've added a leg and to finish off the table I can just reproduce that leg a couple more times. That wire frame you can see around the table, by the way, is called a bounding box and that defines the space an object occupies in the virtual world. What it's there to do is to prevent two objects occupying the same space, which of course in the real world is impossible. Now, once you've finished your table, you can create some more if you want by reproducing that table as a whole. I just click on this little blue triangle here and I click on the icon on the side and then I can move it around and this is an overhead studio floor plan so I can plop it down wherever I like. You can grab stills or video clips. There's even a virtual Nam. Hello, slimy fertilis. <laughs> Frightening. Now, no virtual studio will be complete without a virtual presenter. And there she is, Violet. Violet. Speak to me. And now, some more games reviews. Theme Park caused a huge stir when it was released on PC this summer. Now it's out on the Amiga 1200. You've got to build the world's best theme park. Every decision you make has a knock-on effect. Not a game for blast -em up fans then. This is one you have to think about. Here's Chris. It's a bit daunting when you begin the game, because you start with an empty field. So the first thing to do is build a pathway. And I found the best way is to adopt a grid pattern, so your people can walk around the attractions properly. Here I am just putting the finishing touches to my brand new roller coaster. You can alter the height of the ride, the duration, the length, 
and the speed of it. I'm just smoothing off the corner here so people don't bring up their lunch. So where did they get their lunch from? Well, I built a fry stall in the cola stall, and I've done a bit of a sneaky thing by putting a bit too much salt on the fries so they buy more drinks and spend more money at my park. Now, we can see by the little face at the bottom that people aren't really happy here, and I think it's because there's too much litter around, so I'll have to employ some more handymen. A lot of fascinating and unexpected things happen in this game. It takes a long time to play, but the more you put in, the more you'll get out. Despite the funky name, this isn't the kind of game that gives you instant thrills. You need a lot of patience. This is a really absorbing game, and you could lose yourself in it for days. Theme park scores, then. Both the boys and the girls gave it an excellent game if you've got all day to spare. Four out of five. It had to happen. Those stars of Saturday morning telly, the Power Rangers, have morphed their way onto the SNES and Game Boy. But does the world need yet another scrolling beat-em-up? Here's Sally with the SNES version. The game's not as bad as a TV show, but it's a close thing. The main characters are basic, the background is sparse, and frankly, the gameplay stinks. At the beginning of every level, you start off as a kid. Here I am playing Jason. Halfway through the level, you morph into a Power Ranger. You get a kinky red outfit, and uh, you get more power, more weapons, but not much more interest. It has its moments, but they're few and far between. My little baby five-year-old brother liked it, but it bored me to death. I think there must be some mistake. This game costs more than Earthworm Jim. Who are they kidding? It's just a basic beat-em-up. There's nothing here to keep you playing. And so the scores, the girls and the boys agree. Power Rangers gets a sad old one out of five. Spotting different types of music, number three. Heavy metal. <laughs> bang, bang, bang my head. Bang it on the table. Bang, bang, bang my head. Bang it when I'm able. If you like Mega Drive Mortal Kombat 2, then I've got the ultimate cheat for you. It lets you control every aspect of the game. You need to control every aspect of the game. On the option screen, go down to done, then press left, down, left, right, down, right, left, left, right, right. And then you can fight. You can change everything in the game. And then go bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang on everything I can. Bang, bang, bang. I'm a heavy metal fan. Bang, 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 bang. Now I'm getting on down and dirty. Last week's competition prize was a mega CD with a copy of Rebel Assault. We asked you, in the Star Wars films, what was the name of Princess Leia's home planet? Now the answer is Aldrin, as loads of you knew. In fact, we had over 9,000 entries. But the lucky winner was David Clifford from Orpington in Kent. Well done. Ten runners up get bad influence t-shirts. This week we've got two Earthworm Gym games to give away as prizes, one with a SNES and one with a Mega Drive. And the competition question is, how many eyes does an earthworm have? You can phone in your answer on 0891 555 Call will cost no more than 25p. Lines will close at midnight on Monday. As always, make sure you get permission from the person who pays the phone bill before you dial. Before we go, have a look at this. Primal Rage, a new game taking the arcades by storm. The game is a one-on-one -on -one beat -em up like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, but the Jurassic graphics have been produced by using a special animation technique called stop motion, usually found in movies. Animators constructed clay monsters and moved them frame by frame, digitising them into the game. Each of the seven dino monsters has over 70 moves, including some horrendous finishing moves and some stunning specials, like I'll show you. I'm Diablo on the right here. If I hold down these two buttons, on the left now, and the flame, that's the clockwise rotation, anti-clockwise, you get the fireball. Now, make sure you don't miss next week's programme, because you'll kick yourself if you miss one of our items. Can't tell you anything about it now, it's top secret, but don't miss it. And our main review next week is Sonic and Knuckles. Here's an exclusive first look at it. See ya. Bye-bye.